So a recent publication just named Kathy Wood of ARK Invest as the biggest wealth destroyer out there. And look, that's not something you want to be known for, especially as a fund manager. And so in this video, I want to go ahead and clarify why they're calling Kathy Wood the biggest wealth destroyer out there. And also just give an update on Tesla stock as well as we know that there's been a lot of activity from Kathy Wood and her flagship ETF ARK Invest in regards to Tesla stock as she's been buying a lot of Tesla and recently I've been saying look right now I still want to wait on Tesla I don't want to buy anymore at this current moment so we'll go ahead and give an update on that but first let's start off with this publication right over here and that is Morningstar calling Kathy Wood the worst wealth destroyer in fact if you parse through the article it says that after gaining huge asset flows in 2020 and 2021 her funds were decimated in the 2022 bear market with losses ranging from 34.1 percent to 67.5 percent for the year and it also says that many of its funds enjoyed a strong rebound in 2023 but that wasn't enough to offset their previous losses but i want to give you guys a visual of how her flagship et is looking so I want you guys to take a look at ticker symbol ARKK which is her flagship ETF and you can see that's pretty much at the same levels that it was before the pandemic even took place but if you compare that to the S&P 500 index ETF ticker symbol SPY you can see that pretty much the broader markets are much more higher than the years preceding the pandemic while ARK Invest is pretty much at around the same levels and so basically you are better off putting your money in an index fund and perhaps maybe dabbling in a few individual stocks than perhaps putting it in an ETF fund like her flagship ETF ticker symbol ARKK. Now the perception is that Kathy Wood is a huge bull on Tesla stock and that makes up the majority of her holdings but we have to understand a couple of things. Number one, Tesla necessarily hasn't been performing the best. It hasn't made all-time high since the last three years but it's not her worst performing asset in her uh, fund in fact if we take a look at her fund she has a lot of stocks that did wild numbers during the pandemic Kathy Wood was pretty much praised for having a, a you know astronomical returns during the pandemic but the reality is a lot of her stocks were simply just that pandemic stocks in fact if you take a look at coin coin has pretty much fell down since its inception and the reality is that yes crypto was huge during the pandemic especially when people were flooded from free money from the treasury people were spending money on ridiculous things and so the idea was that exchanges like coinbase were going to rack up a ton of capital but the reality is Coinbase hasn't been performing too well. The same goes for Roku, which is another stack that she invested in that did tremendously well during the pandemic, but pretty much has capitulated. And the idea is that yes, of course, during the pandemic, a lot of individuals were tuned into watching TV and streaming, you know, uh, visuals and you know, watching movies, all that, all that great stuff. But the reality is, once individuals had to go back to work and the economy began to normalize again, it's still not at the same as what it was before the pandemic. Pandemic, but people are not just at home watching as much content as they once were during the pandemic and so stocks like Roku again were performing really bad but in my opinion one of the stocks that I think is the worst performing in her fund is zoom which pretty much as you can see in 2020 and 2021 was making astronomical returns however it's now pretty much discovering new lows now here's the thing zoom made sense during the pandemic as everyone knew that college students or kids in school pretty much were not going to school and pretty much doing everything online through zoom same goes for individuals working from home but again reality said in things began to normalize and kids are back again going to school which is a good thing right people are you know obviously going back to the office not as much as it was before we still have a lot of people working from home and I'm not gonna argue whether that's a good thing or not because of course there's several different ways you could debate on that but the reality is things began to normalize and Zoom isn't as big as what it once was, yet we still have Kathy Wood having a lot of exposure to you know, stocks like this that were pretty much pandemic uh, stocks. So if you take a look at her largest holdings, it's pretty much Coinbase, Tesla, Roku and Zoom. Now to clarify, I'm not trying to say that Tesla is a speculative pandemic stock. I disagree with that, but the reality is a majority of her you know, holdings are pretty much these pandemic names. Now when you go further down the article, 
article, it says that Ark is the third worst destroyer of value, and the biggest one is pretty much ultra short of the QQQ, which is ticker symbol SQQQ, which uses leverage to bet against the NASDAQ 100, but at least investors know you shouldn't hold this ETF long term. So for those that don't know, SQQQ is pretty much something that you shouldn't invest in long term, and most people know that as it's in the perspective. It's pretty much something that shorts the NASDAQ, and of course, no one is going to short the NASDAQ indefinitely. It's just used as a tool to either day trade or something that you could swing trade for a few days to pretty much hedge your portfolio but by all means it's not something that you should hold long term and so even though that's number one most people know that that's not something you invest into long term and so basically what this article is saying is that if you kind of take that out of the picture Kathy Wood's flagship ETF is pretty much up there as term in terms of the pretty much worst uh, destroyer of value but now with that said I want us to go ahead and hop into my laptop so we could go ahead and take a look at Tesla as as I said earlier in this video there's been a lot of activity from Kathy Wood and her flagship ETF and buying millions and millions of dollars in Tesla stock when recently I said this is probably not the best time to buy Tesla. So I want to go ahead and just talk about some recent developments and also talk about why I personally am not adding more shares of Tesla. Alrighty, so we are officially in my laptop taking a look at Tesla stock. Now for a while now, I've been saying that even though Tesla stock is pretty low, I still don't plan on adding any more shares into my long-term portfolio. Now for anyone that's kind of new to the channel, I just want to kind of provide uh, just a little bit of an insight onto like my perspective for Tesla. So yes, I am still a long-term bull for Tesla. I'm still optimistic for Tesla in the long term, despite the fact that I've called out Tesla pretty much falling down since Jan or you know December 28th. In fact, uh, back in December 28th, I made videos. You could go back on my uh, YouTube catalog and kind of just go back. I've been pretty much making videos for the last month talking about Tesla stock going down uh, and warning that I'm still not buying the dip because the dip can always get dippier. You know, it's very common in people just saying, oh, buy the dip. But I like to wait for confirmation of an uptrend and we're still not there yet. And so despite that, I made tons of videos from, uh, you know, uh, December 28th talking about Tesla going down. I want to remind everyone that I'm not a bear on Tesla. I was just saying prices were most likely going to continue going down. I expressed in different videos that this was due to uh, multiple reasons from a technical reason. You know, it was getting rejected on this descending trend line that's been pretty prominent for the last three years. Also, fundamentals weren't good. Uh, of course, the macro environment isn't that favorable for Tesla. So I've talked about why Tesla was going down for a while. And then even when Kathy Wood was buying Tesla back on the 25th in millions of dollars, I said, look, I still don't plan on buying just yet. And all, you know, the Tesla kind of Super Bowls, right? Because I don't really consider myself a Super Bowl. They, they'll try to bring any good news for Tesla. And they said that this was the bottom. Well, here we are today. And Tesla, in fact, at one point today touched $175. So even breaking below what many called the bottom right now it, does this mean that tesla is going to continue going down lower no not necessarily right and so we'll go ahead and touch on that uh, but i kind of want to just uh, real quickly break down why did we see some pain in the overall markets because this wasn't just tesla and silo uh, in fact if we go ahead and look at tesla tesla fell down pretty much the beginning of today's trading session but again it wasn't just tesla if we look at the s p 500 uh, we see that we pretty much closed lower from the close of last week. If you go to a daily chart, you see, again, it was a red candle. And so what caused the markets to kind of fall down? Again, it wasn't just Tesla, but it was something that kind of took place from a macro perspective. As you guys know, if you've been familiar with the channel, which if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on any future uploads. But I've always often emphasized the importance of not just looking at the squiggly lines in the chart, because of course, technical analysis isn't the only data point. It's also not the strongest one. I say you want to look at the macro environment and also the fundamentals. And so from a macro perspective today what did we get right well at 10 a.m we got the ism service report right and so uh, if you take a look right over here it was pretty hot right expectations was that it was going to just slightly go up it came up a lot higher than what many expected now for those that don't know uh, what this actually kind of means I'll go ahead and try to simplify it. I explained this uh, earlier today within the push and profit private group which if you're interested in joining it's the first link in the description below uh, but pretty much today's ISM service report showed that the cost of services had its biggest increase 
since uh, 2012. And so this part of the report gets a lot of attention. It's important to understand, though, that this measures the widespread of changes, not how big they are, right? It's the breadth of, of you know, services and the prices paid. And so uh, although it doesn't mean that the magnitude of prices have went up in services, what it shows is that this increase in prices doesn't help the argument for lowering, lowering interest rates. And so if you go ahead and look, pretty much after that report came out, we saw big red candles for the S&P 500 index ETF. And so, yes, the market did rebound, but this was ultimately a negative catalyst. And it, it bled in through the overall markets. We see this with, with names like Tesla. Now, Tesla was pretty much already on its way down in the pre-markets or after hours, whatever. But it also got amplified after this report came out. Now, it did rebound. And so we'll continue to monitor what's going on with uh, the data that's going to be coming uh, for this week. Of course, we still have a lot of earnings, a lot of companies. I'm looking at Spotify, uh, Hershey, for just for me personally. Those are stocks that I'm looking at. Uh, Spotify, I have long-term exposure to uh, and a few others. But, you know, we do have a lot of Fed speakers uh, speaking. We have Atlanta Fed, uh, Raphael Bostic, Cleveland Fed, Minneapolis, Boston, Philadelphia. So a lot of uh, speakers from the Federal Reserve, or Tom Barkins, you, I mean, it's flooded with them speaking. And so this is going to cause a lot of volatility for this week and, and also in addition to the earnings. Uh, but I'm going to mainly be focused on the next catalyst, which I think is the biggest one, which is going to be the weekly initial jobless claims. As I've been saying, that the job market is pretty much uh, the bloodline for the economy. You guys hear me say this often over and over again because, again, we want to pay attention to the labor markets, especially because uh, the government job numbers – seem to be really hot and then they get revised drastically and so we'll, we'll continue to monitor this but going back on tangent to look at tesla right so because that, that's something that a lot of people always ask it's definitely a popular stock and so one of the things i've said and i, I provided a bear case and and a bull case because again i don't have a crystal ball but I've been saying that, hey, I don't think this is the bottom for Tesla. Um, and we've seen Tesla pretty much bounce up and down. And one of the things is when you zoom out, we see that there's a lot of volume relative to price around over here. So that means that there's a lot of exchanging between the buyers and the sellers. I say this almost every video, um, but it's important to repeat yourself, right? Because, you know, if someone were to teach you a lesson and kind of explain something, we you'd want them to uh, bring the, the fundamental concepts over and over again. It's something that's repeated. You don't want to have someone say, oh, well, this day, that, and, you know, just flip-flop, right? I've been repeatedly saying that, hey, look, there's a lot of volume relative to price over here, relative to price, sorry. And, of course, if we break below it, well, now we have this lower volume, uh, you know, relative to price over here. And if there's selling pressure, it could amplify the move as the order books could get pushed downwards. And we have this gap at around 145 that I've been highlighting for Tesla. And I said, hey, you know, if we do go down there, that could be a possible uh, support. Um, and I'll look to see if maybe that's when I want to add more into my long term portfolio. And so that's like the bear case if things continue going down. However, if we zoom in, we did have a red candle, but we had this long wick with a lot of volume. And so what that tells me is that, okay, the buyers stepped in. They didn't want it to go below 175. Enough buyers said, no, 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 we want to buy this at these levels. These levels are attractive. And so that's holding Tesla up for now, and that's good. And so what's the bull case, right? Because, again, you can't just you know have a one-sided plan you want to have an actionable plan for regardless of what the market does right and i often get criticized for this people are like oh why you have a bull plan and a bear plan look i'm simply just preparing myself and when i want to deploy more capital into a stock that i find value in again you don't have to follow what i do you should only trade and invest in whatever you see value in right but for me personally uh i'm looking for and i've been saying this uh, over and over again right I'm looking to see if Tesla could rebound uh, and, and get closer to this kind of like $205 area. Now, once that happens and we see Tesla start moving upwards, then I'll add more capital in my long-term portfolio. Again, I'm not trying to time the market. I always agree it's time in the market. But just because something's down, right, doesn't mean that it's the best sale out there, right? I mean, imagine the people who said, oh, this was a dip. I'm buying it, right? And then it continues going lower and going lower and going lower. And yeah, if you're investing in 20 years, it doesn't matter that you bought the exact exact dip. No, it doesn't necessarily matter. But of course, 
uh, it's going to play a role in what your um, overall return is. And again, I'm not really someone who is a stock picker. I generally have a majority of my long-term portfolio in index funds such as uh, spot, well, not really SPY, I invest in VOO, which is pretty much the same thing, but it has a lower expense ratio. And a few other um, pretty much index ETS with a few uh, individual stocks such as Tesla, uh, Nvidia is one, uh, as well as Spotify. Spotify is a name I, I've been. I haven't really covered it. I covered it as a swing trade uh, a few weeks ago within the Push and Profit Private Group. But year to date, uh, pretty much Spotify has been uh, killing it. I mean, look at this. Spotify is just an uh, absolute beast. They do have their earnings. Uh, I may provide an update publicly on the channel, although I, I may just do that just privately, privately for those within the Push and Profit Private Group. Uh, but again, these are just just a small selected few stocks i think it's for most people you're better off uh investing in the overall long-term uh you know index funds for your long-term portfolio but of course if you want to have some exposure you could buy some individual stocks i just don't recommend stock picking your entire long-term portfolio uh as there's a lot to keep up with i mean if for those that will see me cover tesla you guys see me cover tesla almost daily and there's always new information that influences the price going up and down and so it's a lot to keep track of especially if you're looking at the fundamentals that's a lot of math that that's pretty much where the most the majority of my work goes into looking at the actual fundamentals looking at the cost you know uh, the actual business and understanding it and so imagine i'd pull my hair out if i had to do that for a whole bunch of individual stocks yes these funds have teams of people but it, you could see even what uh, ark invest who has enough money to employ a lot of research uh, for, for their stocks that they pick. And even them, they're not doing too well, right? And so that's why um, just a little mini lesson over here. I know I'm kind of going off tangent. I like investing in mostly index funds with a few stocks like Tesla. Again, Tesla's down, but I'm still long-term bullish. I know I get ripped apart in the comments. How are you bearish and bullish at the same time? Look, you could be bullish on a stock and not necessarily have to buy every single day, right? You could say, look, I think things are overvalued over here and still be bullish, and that's fine. And so uh, hopefully uh, whoever was watching this video, if you made it this far, you found some value. But let me know in the comment section down below, what are your thoughts for Tesla? Are you investing in it long term or is this just a simple trade? Uh, because, uh, you know, one of the things I see a lot of individuals mistake is understanding whether they're trading and investing. Again, I do have a short term trading account. Uh, I haven't been trading Tesla uh, as much as there's been multiple other opportunities out there. I mean, Microsoft, Meta, all the other companies have been, you know, dominating so far this year. So I haven't really been focusing on Tesla. Uh, but again, without making this video any much more longer than it needs to be, you guys let me know in the comment section down below. And before you guys go, consider watching this next video right over here. And I'll see you guys on that next video. Take care, guys.